This is Strange Storm and you are watching first part of what if Naruto was saved by Tony Starks. If you enjoy this video please like share and subscribe to the channel. Now wasting no more time let's start the story. Beep 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 That was the sound of a heart monitor being hooked up to a person who appeared to be in hell. He also had a lot of other wires attached to him, as well as blood transfusion equipment and drips, as well as a breathing mask. Beep. 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 When is he going to wake up, Tony? A female voice inquired. I'm not sure, Pepper. It's all up to him. When I caught him, he was severely beaten. His skull was fractured, he had four broken ribs on each side, he had a broken left arm and a fractured right arm, and his left leg was fractured with a sprained ankle, and that's just the bones. He was suffering from severe internal bleeding. Whoever did this to him wanted him to die, but from what I can tell, this kid is a fighter. He also had a lot of old scars, according to the doctor. Tony, the male voice, said as he showed her the boy's medical chart. Pepper, the female, just stood there, mouth agape, staring in shock at the child. After all that, he's still alive. Tony simply nodded his head. Beep, 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 beep. The boy's body began to shake violently, and his heart monitor began to show that his heart rate had skyrocketed. Get him to a doctor right away. He's going into cardiac arrest. Hurry! Tony exclaimed. He dashed to the boy's bedside and attempted to restrain him. Two doctors rushed in, one injecting something to calm him down and the other assisting Tony in holding him down. Two nurses also entered, one of whom pushed Tony and Pepper outside. Don't worry, Mr. Stark and Ms. Potts. We'll do our best to look after the boy. Relax, please. Please go home and rest. There is nothing else you can do. We will contact you if we need anything. She then turned and walked away. She's right, Pepper. Let's go home. We'll return tomorrow, okay? Pepper simply nodded. A doctor rushed out of the room as they were about to leave. Mr. Stark. Mr. Stark, please. He's awake now. Please come quickly. Tony dashed into the room. They saw his eyes half open and him struggling to move his arms and legs as they entered. He appeared to be attempting to get up. He was mumbling something as well. Nada. K. Bye. Tay. Me. Ma. Da. Ra. What was that? The doctor asked, his hand on his hip. Can you tell me your name, boy? The boy simply waved his hand in front of the doctor's face, as if attempting to grab him. Na. Nar. Naruto. You. Uzu. Uzumaki. Where do you live? Naruto Uzumaki, and who are your parents? The doctor asked, coaxing him to lie down. I'm a an orphan, from Ko no A, he said quietly. His eyes then closed, and his breathing became more even. Wow. He has a very strong immune system, and the sedative only took effect after five minutes. The doctor exclaimed. And that's nearly four times the dose, which is equivalent to taking down four elephants. Tony then proceeded to the head doctor. Is he all right, doc? He inquired. Yes, he is fine. I'm not sure what happened, but he is fine and out of danger. His bones are settling and healing, and his internal bleeding has stopped. It's truly amazing. He's healed in two days what would normally take at least three weeks. And the way he's going, I'd say he'll be up and moving in three days, and fit as a horse in five to six. 
Tony had a shocked expression on his face as well. However, Tony, I have some bad news. Tony's attention was drawn to this. He has a condition similar to yours, not identical, but similar. Around his chest cavity, he has about five pieces of metal that are about two to three millimeters long. Two are stuck in his bones near his left side breastbone, and three are around his heart. It's getting closer, very slowly, but it's getting closer. We could make things worse if we go in and operate. It's too dangerous. There is only one thing I could do, and it is entirely up to you, and you know what I mean, it is entirely up to you. Tony's mind was blown. He was aware of his precarious condition, but he is still alive thanks to his chest piece. How much time does he have? Tony inquired. I'd say two to three weeks at most. The doctor responded. And when do you think he'll be awake? Well, if things continue as they are, in two days. Okay, I'll be back then. I need to talk to him first. The doctor nodded and returned to see about Naruto. Tony returned to the hospital and met up with Pepper before leaving. Pepper was concerned because he was quiet the entire way home. Tony, what's the matter? Her voice was tinged with concern as she inquired. He's going to die in about three weeks. He said it exactly like that. WWH what? Why? How? She asked, almost shouting. He has some metal fragments that are getting closer to his heart and will eventually kill him. It is too dangerous to operate and remove it. I'm not sure how it got there. I'm not sure if it's like me. Oh, but can you help him make one, like with that thing on your chest? Yes, but I know nothing about him or who he is. I'd like to, so I'd like to talk to him first and then make a decision. I could just give him the old one. Okay, I'd like to go to, okay, we talk to him. Tony simply nodded his head. He has a lot to think about. We're back at the hospital. Naruto's mental landscape. Naruto-kun, please get up. Please, Naruto-kun, get up. A very feminine voice begged imploringly. G-R-H-R-R-M-M-G-M-R-R-H-M. Come on, stand up. Five minutes more. On the female's head, a tick mark appeared. Well, if you don't get up now, no more sex for you, she said as she cleaned her nails. That was effective. He was up and running faster than the speed of light. I'm up, up, and up. Not funny, Katsumi, he said with a pout. Katsumi, the now identified female voice, simply giggled. Ugh, my head muttered Naruto. Then he stood up, his eyes cold. Fuck. What's going on? Where's that fucker Madara, Sasuke, and Obito, as well as that fucking hypocrite son of a bitch father of mine, Minato? He exclaimed. Other places. A certain tunic wearing Kunoichi is alive as a result of a certain blonde sneeze. Some fucking B asterisk TCH is using my lines. She yelled to no one in particular. Or is it Naruto-kun, by the way, where is he? She asks, blushing and giggling. I'd like to see his tool again. I haven't seen it in a long time, Naruto-kun. Where are you? She leaps away, searching for Naruto-kun and his tool. Back in Naruto's head, at the hospital. Calm down, Naruto, there's no one there. Huh, he said wisely, after cursing worse than a sailor or a certain redhead. He then shivers and has a sensation, a very pleasurable sensation. I have a strange feeling that a certain redhead is looking for me. Weird, he muttered. Are you paying attention, Naruto? Oh, what do you mean dead? Who murdered them? You did, in fact, 
you practically destroyed them. I did. Oh no. Yeah, I fucked up. I massacred those sons of bitches when I beat down Obito after draining that fucking hypocrite Minato out of your other half of Chakra. But then Minato had some strange seals, and he and Hiruzen merged with Madara, took Nagato's next eyes, merged with Obito's body, and used the Rinnegan to gain complete control of the Jubi. Damn, that fight was tough, but thanks to you and me studying all those seals, we were able to cut the connection, undo that weird chimera technique that bastard used, and seal the Jubi back into the moon while separating the tailed beast and bringing back the other Jinchuriki, which was fucking taxing and left me half dead. Madara and Minato were also on their last legs, but nearly tore me a new asshole, but I fucking sealed them up, thanks to the Jinchurikis, but then that gay asshole, Sasuke came and stabbed me in the back because he was so jealous of my power, saying something about his sword killing me, ha like if, but Hanada came and showed him, he 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 he. That's all there is to it. I'm very impressed. Naruto-kun. You killed those fuckers, but you forgot about the part where he used his last ditch effort to kill Hanada with that fucking eye, and you jumped in, killed him, got knocked out, and went through some strange portal. Which leads me here. What's the matter? We are no longer in Konoha. Sasuke Kamui had some effect with some lingering chakra of the Jubi power, which amplified it significantly and sent you across dimensions. That completely floored Naruto. He just stared at her, dumbfounded. Where am I, and can you transport us back home? I'm sorry, Naruto-kun, but I can't. I'm not familiar with cross-dimensional travel. But the good news is that you got their eyes, the combined Rinnegan, Sharingan, because you were the one who sealed the Jubi and the combined Minato, Hiruzen, Madara, and Obito. Well, that's good, but after all that, I can't see my home again. I'd trade these eyes in a heartbeat for that, but thanks for trying to cheer me up. He was a little depressed, he admitted. Katsumi simply nodded, and Naruto took a seat next to her. The silence simply took its place. No one knew how long it would last. Naruto sat there, lost in his own world, staring at his hands. Katsumi? How long have I been gone? I believe three days, almost four. Huh, four days eh? Well, I think it's time for me to get up, explore this new world, and figure out where I'm going to spend the rest of my life, what do you think? Katsumi simply smiled and nodded. Well, I'll see you later. He faded out of his mind with that. Yes. Naruto-kun, the rest of your life is less than two weeks, she said, her eyes welling up with tears. In the medical center. Damn, those Cretans did a number on me, fuck. It'll take at least another three days to be able to run around a place like Konoha at least 50 times, and a week to get to 150, said one Uzumaki Naruto. And good morning to you, Mr. Uzumaki, welcome back to the world of the living. A voice unknown to the blonde's ears said. Who the fucks are you? Said Naruto to the stranger. Me, I'm known to many as an inventor, Tony Stark, but to the world, he said as he approached Naruto, his full armor slipping on and his face mask sliding down, I am known as Iron Man. Uzumaki Naruto, 19 year age, had a difficult life. Before reaching his early teens, he was orphaned, tortured, starved, buried alive, beaten countless times, and even violated by both sexes, and he witnessed and fought in a war. His father is the one who has shaped his life. He could claim to have witnessed far more than any other person his age could. Furthermore, he was unlikely to be surprised by anything. He even crossed a portal to another universe. But here he is, mouth agape, staring at a man in an iron suit. Huh? Will you come back? I told you, you can call me Tony Stark or Iron Man. Um, okay, Stark-san, my name is. Yes, Naruto, Uzumaki Naruto, I know. 
Tony cut him off before he could finish his sentence. How did you find out? Naruto regarded him with suspicion. You informed us. I did? When? I just woke up. You awoke for a few moments about two days ago. Enough chit chat. We have important business to attend to. I don't have time for business. I have to find a way. Home. He completed his sentence quietly. As Katsumi's words replayed in his mind, he began to wonder. Neither she nor he knew how to carry him back. His shoulder hunched. Well, you have to because you can't leave without answering some questions I have. In addition, if you want to live to. What exactly do you mean, live? We'll get to that, but first, who are you and where are you from? My name is Naruto Uzumaki, and I am from Konoha, the fire country. That sounds Japanese. Are you Japanese, or are you from Japan? What exactly is Japanese? Oh, I forgot, I'm not from this time or dimension. Tony was now the one who was taken aback. What? That is not possible. What about dimension travel? Stop making up stories, kid. Naruto was becoming irritated at being accused of lying. I'm not exaggerating. Why would I do that? You have no idea who I am. Fine, if you're telling the truth, what happened to you to put you in that situation? Naruto's gaze was locked on Tony's. He kept an eye on him. He then turned to look out the window. I was fighting a crazy man. My village banded together with the other four nations and went to war against this insane man. He desired to create an illusion of our world and control it. Our village was attacked by a powerful creature known as the Kayubi when I was born. A colossal fox with nine tails. Our leader at the time sealed it into me, transforming me into a Jinchuriki, or what would be loosely Kaede. The power of human sacrifice, Tony cut him off here. He sealed it into me right here. He raised his shirt, revealing the seal. There are eight other people like me. Madara, the insane man, required the beast powers to carry out his plan. He had seven of us and needed the other two, which were me and another. When the other four nations realized they were in danger, they formed an alliance, and we all went to war against him. After nearly three months of fighting, it was just me and him. I eventually defeated him, and then someone intervened and sent me here. I'm not sure how that happened. Tony just stood there watching him as he stared out the window, telling his story. He realized he wasn't telling the entire story, but he was still telling the truth. He was still amazed that it was possible, and that this man had somehow traveled into another dimension and ended up here, in his. So, you were in a war and somehow crossed into this dimension during the final battle. So your side was victorious in the war? I suppose. Madara is no longer alive. He was the boss. As a result, we won. I'm not sure what's going on, and I'm not sure if I can return home. I suppose I could call this a permanent vacation. Naruto finished his sentence with a small smile on his face. He reflected on the good times he had. He'd miss all of his favorite people from home. Tony could see the anguish he was feeling in his eyes. He began to think. Should he reveal his secret in order to save this person's life? Even so, he could feel his pain. He did create military weapons. Furthermore, he had witnessed it firsthand and was now attempting to put a stop to it. He also knew that this kid was not going to be returning home anytime soon. He had his response. He already knew what he was going to do. In addition, he could always use a new assistant. Probably a trainee. All right. I've made my decision. Naruto, your life is in jeopardy. 
You have some metal fragments around your heart that are slowly approaching it. It would kill you soon, if not now. The doctors attempted to remove the majority of it, but were unable to do so. I have a device that will assist you. Do you want me to assist you? Wait, 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 she says. What? I'm going to perish. Impossible. That is correct. The metal shards are small. But once it's in there, in your chest, it's not going anywhere. So that's what that jerk meant. Fucking temerity. But why do you want to assist me? I mean, we just met, and I have no idea who you are. To tell you the truth, I'm not sure why, but something tells me to. Furthermore, you never know what karma will bring your way. And you'll have to pay me. Naruto simply stared at him. Fine, how long until I can leave here? I don't like going to hospitals. The whole thing will take a couple of hours. So, by tomorrow evening, tops the next day. Just relax while I summon the doctors to prepare you for the operation. Look at my chest. It would be the same on you. Hum, that looks cool. Just tell those doctors to hurry up. Yeah, just chill out. Tony returned his gaze to Naruto as the doctors entered, a thought running through his mind. Naruto, don't make me regret this decision. Mind of Naruto. Didn't you know, Katsumi? Yeah, sorry Naruto-kun, I couldn't heal it or get it out for some reason. I couldn't tell you that your life was about to come to an end. Please accept my apologies. Katsumi responded. She was at a loss for what to do. Her chakra was powerless to move it. Naruto simply sighed. At the very least, Tony could assist. I really do owe him one, and that suit is really cool. I'm curious what it does. They've started putting the device in. I wonder if I could modify it so that our chakra flows through it. It feels very powerful. Katsumi said a breaking Naruto out of his thought process. However, it has no effect on the body. It's like a power core just sitting on your chest. It is, however, electrical. The device's structure is designed to generate electricity. I could manipulate the basic atomic structure with my chakra and infuse it with some of my concentrated structural base essence. Naruto just stood there staring at her. Katsumi laughed at his expression. Simply put, Naruto, what gives me unlimited chakra, I can put it in the basic structure of the device, making it not only produce electric current, but also boost the production of your chakra throughout your body, as well as allow minds to flow faster through you and increase production. It will significantly boost your natural strength and speed. Without chakra, your normal running speed was like that green spandex man without his weights. You could say that it's now doubled. Strength is similar. The disadvantage is that your chakra control will be compromised. Badly. Damn it, and I've been working so hard to perfect it. Life, however, is not that simple. I'll leave it up to you. Katsumi simply nodded and sat down to get to work. It will take some time. I'm going to need a lot of focus and timing. I have to start the procedure as soon as they put that device in. Alright, let's hope everything goes as planned. Naruto approaches her and sits down. He relaxed with her, closing his eyes. Well, Mr. Stark, the procedure went off without a hitch. The metal fragments have ceased to move and are now moving backwards towards the magnet. We were able to get it stuck on his breastbone. So, in a couple of weeks, everything will be on the magnet, and you'll just have to take it out and clean it, and he'll be back to normal. Hum, that's quite good. Thank you, doctor. When will he be ready to leave? Alright, tomorrow morning. 
he remains unconscious. The doctor then left Tony alone, staring at the old chest piece in his hand. He made the first one. Tony returned to his chair. I hope this is the right decision. In fact, it feels like one of my best. He smiled as he reflected on his thoughts. What's up with your smile, Tony? Those are hard to come by these days. I'm just feeling good about this kid, Pepper. Are you certain that giving him the new Model 1 is such a good idea? I guess we'll just have to see for ourselves. He concluded with a smile. He took her hand and left the hospital, expecting Naruto to get up, but if he had turned around, he would have seen someone sneaking out of the room, the door slowly opening, and an empty bed. Uzumaki Naruto, 19, had a difficult life. Before reaching his early teens, he was orphaned, tortured, starved, buried alive, beaten countless times, and even violated by both sexes, and he witnessed and fought in a war. His father is the one who has shaped his life. He could claim to have witnessed far more than any other person his age could. Furthermore, he was unlikely to be surprised by anything. He even crossed a portal to another universe. But here he is, mouth agape, staring at a man in an iron suit. Huh? Will you come back? I told you, you can call me Tony Stark or Iron Man. Um, okay, Stark San, my name is. Yes, Naruto, Uzumaki Naruto, I know. Tony cut him off before he could finish his sentence. How did you find out? Naruto regarded him with suspicion. You informed us. I did? When? I just woke up. You awoke for a few moments about two days ago. Enough chit chat. We have important business to attend to. I don't have time for business. I have to find a way. Home. He completed his sentence quietly. As Katsumi's words replayed in his mind, he began to wonder. Neither she nor he knew how to carry him back. His shoulder hunched. Well, you have to because you can't leave without answering some questions I have. In addition, if you want to live to. What exactly do you mean, live? We'll get to that, but first, who are you and where are you from? My name is Naruto Uzumaki, and I am from Konoha, the fire country. That sounds Japanese. Are you Japanese, or are you from Japan? What exactly is Japanese? Oh, I forgot, I'm not from this time or dimension. Tony was now the one who was taken aback. What? That is not possible. What about dimension travel? Stop making up stories, kid. Naruto was becoming irritated at being accused of lying. I'm not exaggerating. Why would I do that? You have no idea who I am. Fine, if you're telling the truth, what happened to you to put you in that situation? Naruto's gaze was locked on Tony's. He kept an eye on him. He then turned to look out the window. I was fighting a crazy man. My village banded together with the other four nations and went to war against this insane man. He desired to create an illusion of our world and control it. Our village was attacked by a powerful creature known as the Kayubi when I was born. A colossal fox with nine tails. Our leader at the time sealed it into me, transforming me into a Jinchuriki, or what would be loosely Kaede. The power of human sacrifice, Tony cut him off here. He sealed it into me right here. He raised his shirt, revealing the seal. There are eight other people like me. Madara, the insane man, required the beast powers to carry out his plan. He had seven of us and needed the other two, which were me and another. When the other four nations realized they were in danger, they formed an alliance, and we all went to war against him. After nearly three months of fighting, it was just me and him. 
I eventually defeated him, and then someone intervened and sent me here. I'm not sure how that happened. Tony just stood there watching him as he stared out the window, telling his story. He realized he wasn't telling the entire story, but he was still telling the truth. He was still amazed that it was possible, and that this man had somehow traveled into another dimension and ended up here, in his. So, you were in a war and somehow crossed into this dimension during the final battle. So your side was victorious in the war? I suppose. Madara is no longer alive. He was the boss. As a result, we won. I'm not sure what's going on, and I'm not sure if I can return home. I suppose I could call this a permanent vacation. Naruto finished his sentence with a small smile on his face. He reflected on the good times he had. He'd miss all of his favorite people from home. Tony could see the anguish he was feeling in his eyes. He began to think. Should he reveal his secret in order to save this person's life? Even so, he could feel his pain. He did create military weapons. Furthermore, he had witnessed it firsthand and was now attempting to put a stop to it. He also knew that this kid was not going to be returning home anytime soon. He had his response. He already knew what he was going to do. In addition, he could always use a new assistant. Probably a trainee. Alright, I've made my decision. Naruto, your life is in jeopardy. You have some metal fragments around your heart that are slowly approaching it. It would kill you soon, if not now. The doctors attempted to remove the majority of it, but were unable to do so. I have a device that will assist you. Do you want me to assist you? Wait, 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 she says. What? I'm going to perish. Impossible. That is correct. The metal shards are small. But once it's in there, in your chest, it's not going anywhere. So that's what that jerk meant. Fucking temerity. But why do you want to assist me? I mean, we just met, and I have no idea who you are. To tell you the truth, I'm not sure why, but something tells me to. Furthermore, you never know what karma will bring your way. And you'll have to pay me. Naruto simply stared at him. Fine. How long until I can leave here? I don't like going to hospitals. The whole thing will take a couple of hours. So, by tomorrow evening, tops the next day. Just relax while I summon the doctors to prepare you for the operation. Look at my chest. It would be the same on you. Hum, that looks cool. Just tell those doctors to hurry up. Yeah, just chill out. Tony returned his gaze to Naruto as the doctors entered, a thought running through his mind. Naruto, don't make me regret this decision. Mind of Naruto. Didn't you know, Katsumi? Yeah, sorry Naruto-kun, I couldn't heal it or get it out for some reason. I couldn't tell you that your life was about to come to an end. Please accept my apologies. Katsumi responded. She was at a loss for what to do. Her chakra was powerless to move it. Naruto simply sighed. At the very least, Tony could assist. I really do owe him one, and that suit is really cool. I'm curious what it does. They've started putting the device in. I wonder if I could modify it so that our chakra flows through it. It feels very powerful, Katsumi said a breaking Naruto out of his thought process. However, it has no effect on the body. It's like a power core just sitting on your chest. It is, however, electrical. The device's structure is designed to generate electricity. I could manipulate the basic atomic structure with my chakra and infuse it with some of my concentrated structural base essence. Naruto just stood there staring at her. 
Katsumi laughed at his expression. Simply put, Naruto, what gives me unlimited chakra, I can put it in the basic structure of the device, making it not only produce electric current, but also boost the production of your chakra throughout your body, as well as allow minds to flow faster through you and increase production. It will significantly boost your natural strength and speed. Without chakra, your normal running speed was like that green spandex man without his weights. You could say that it's now doubled. Strength is similar. The disadvantage is that your chakra control will be compromised. Badly. Damn it, and I've been working so hard to perfect it. Life, however, is not that simple. I'll leave it up to you. Katsumi simply nodded and sat down to get to work. It will take some time. I'm going to need a lot of focus and timing. I have to start the procedure as soon as they put that device in. Alright, let's hope everything goes as planned. Naruto approaches her and sits down. He relaxed with her, closing his eyes. Well, Mr. Stark, the procedure went off without a hitch. The metal fragments have ceased to move and are now moving backwards towards the magnet. We were able to get it stuck on his breastbone. So, in a couple of weeks, everything will be on the magnet, and you'll just have to take it out and clean it, and he'll be back to normal. Hum, that's quite good. Thank you, doctor. When will he be ready to leave? All right, tomorrow morning. He remains unconscious. The doctor then left Tony alone, staring at the old chest piece in his hand. He made the first one. Tony returned to his chair. I hope this is the right decision. In fact, it feels like one of my best. He smiled as he reflected on his thoughts. What's up with your smile, Tony? Those are hard to come by these days. I'm just feeling good about this kid, Pepper. Are you certain that giving him the new model one is such a good idea? I guess we'll just have to see for ourselves. He concluded with a smile. He took her hand and left the hospital, expecting Naruto to get up, but if he had turned around, he would have seen someone sneaking out of the room, the door slowly opening, and an empty bed. Bar. Yo. Stark, you're awake, you just drifted off there. Tony was startled awake by a voice. He was familiar with that voice. James, Rhodey, Rhodes, his best friend. I'm fine, I'm just thinking about things. Are you thinking about that kid you saved a few months ago? For a while, Stark remained silent. Still clutching the scrap of paper discovered on Naruto's bed. Yes, Rhodey can't believe he just vanished without a trace. Hey man, there's not much you can do. We're all looking for him and doing everything we can to find him. Furthermore, if that is his note, he will find you. Stark returned his gaze to the paper in his hand. If you're reading this, I'm probably long gone. Sorry for disappearing on you, but I need to clear my mind. I realize I owe you one for saving my life, and I promise to repay the favor. Anyway, thanks for putting the device on my chest again. I'll find you once my thoughts have cleared and I've determined my next step. Uzumaki Naruto I really hope so, Rodi, because who knows what might happen if that chest piece falls into the wrong hands. Didn't you say he was a ninja? Isn't he capable of defending himself? Rodi inquired. Well, yeah, but in his condition, I really can't say. Tony responded. Man, you need to unwind a little and go home and chill with Miss Potts. Tony took a drink from his glass, returned the note to his coat, stood up, and looked at Rodi. Yeah, I'm on my way home now. Man, thank you for the drink. Rodi also stood up. No problem, man. Just relax and kick ass with that iron suit of yours. Tony laughed. He shook his friend's hand and walked away. 5 p.m. Sasha's Diner. 
Naruto has been out of the hospital where he was being treated for four months. He has been retraining himself in order to get back into shape. Not to mention finding work and learning about the new world culture. He has also been the local hero, clearing up all of the criminal activity in the area. We can now find him in the neighborhood restaurant, preparing some meals. Special order no. 7. Naruto, the waiter says. Got it. Sasha, I'll be right up. He responded. He moved to this neighborhood about a month and a half ago. When a couple of bandits tried to rob Sasha's small restaurant, he bailed her out. He rescued her and asked to begin working in it. He has been the new chef since then. The restaurant has grown into one of the best places to eat in town. Hey Sasha. Turn the sign, it's best we close up now, food stock is running low, I'll run out and get some more at the local store tomorrow. He called out after double checking the inventory. Okay. We received another order. A 12. Alright, I'll bring it out. He noticed the customer as he came out with it. She was dressed in blue bleach jeans, a white shirt that wasn't buttoned all the way up, and a ponytail of her red hair. She was wearing a shade in her hair. Did you order the no? 12? He inquired. She gave a nod. All right, here you go. He put the plate in front of her. Enjoy. He took out a cloth and began cleaning the counter. She ate her meal while watching him. Are you Naruto Uzumaki? Who wants to know? He asked, coming to a halt. Hello, my name is Natalie. That's me, what do you require? Well, I heard some rumors around here about a guy going around cleaning up bandits and other criminal activities. Shadow Fox is so named because of his fox mask and his ability to disappear quickly in the shadows. He significantly reduced crime rates. How much do you know about him? Not much, to be honest. I've never seen him, but he seems like a nice guy. Are you a journalist? No, just a curious individual. She said this as she finished her meal. Naruto picked up her dishes and wiped down the counter. Well, you know what they say, curiosity killed the cat. Oh, you're concerned about me? How thoughtful of you. She made a sly remark. No, I'm not concerned. Because I know you can protect yourself, and that 9mm you have behind you is good protection. He responded as he returned to the kitchen. He would have noticed her shocked expression if he had turned around. Later that night. Naruto was practicing his katas in the field behind his house. He was running through it with his eyes closed. His thoughts were also on the woman he met. He couldn't help but notice her beauty. I agree, Naruto. She reminds me of your mother, and you do realize she was lying, right? Katsumi thought to himself. I noticed, she says. She was on the lookout for information. And she is strong. I'm curious what she does. She is built for combat and speed. Hmm, you might get to know because we're doing some bird watching. She stated. Naruto blinked opened his eyes and resumed his katas. Someone was watching him from a building across his field. As he went on, he quickly pulled out a kanai and threw it at her. It took off and landed right next to her feet. He vanished and reappeared behind her, his hand around her waist, his head resting on her shoulder. You know, spying on people isn't nice. If you wanted to see me, just say, Natalie. He spoke into her ear. Natalie was stunned out of her wits. She was watching her target, running through a very strong fighting style, when she saw a knife-like object flying through the air and becoming stuck in the concrete by her foot. Then he appeared right next to her. And it all happened in less than three seconds. 
She tried to remain calm as he spoke into her ear. I wasn't sure if you'd give me a shot, so who or what are you? You're not a typical human. Oh, well, like I said, all you had to do was ask, and yes, I am no ordinary human, his voice became cold, losing all levity. What are you, and why are you spying on me? I don't like spies, and you had better tell the truth. Natalie flinched as he spoke. She realized she had been discovered. She also realized he had figured out she was lying. She could feel his grip tightening and a knife at her throat. She made the decision to test the waters. What are you talking about? My name is Natalie, and I'm just passing through. I'm from New York. Naruto tightened his grip and pressed his kanai against her throat, drawing blood. This is your last chance to find out the truth. She exhaled a sigh. She doesn't appear to be able to win this one. Just kill me, I'm not going to tell you shit. Yes, I am a spy, and I was looking for someone in this area who was getting into trouble with the wrong people, and I was supposed to get rid of them. And I believe it was you, Mr. Shadow Fox. So that's all you're going to get. Naruto's expression was solemn. He tried to recall which organization was so powerful that they would send someone to get his head. They were only a few inches tall. Hum, let's see, I swept up some drug groups, some weapons groups, and, oh, that group. To confirm it, I could read her mind. Naruto cut the back of her neck and knocked her out. He dragged her inside and tied her to a chair. He closed his eyes and placed his hand on her head. He reopened it, revealing the Rinnegan. He used the human path's power to read her mind. He witnessed her training to be a spy, having been raised from infancy by the USSR's Black Widow Ops program in Department X, along with other young female orphans, where she was brainwashed and trained in combat and espionage at the covert Red Room facility. He saw her mission as figuring out who stopped their shipment of nuclear weapons and interrogating and killing the person. She was brainwashed and implanted with false memories, damn it. Well, I could unblock her true memories, but I wonder if she'll have any psychological issues as a result, sighs, and here we go. He was able to unblock her true memories. He saw how a man named Ivan Petrovich saved her, how he brought her up and then placed her in the program. She didn't have much of a childhood because she was mostly trained from a young age. When he was finished, he sat down and considered his next move. He untied her and sat her down in his bed. He exhaled a sigh. You there, Katsumi? He thought, calling out to Katsumi. What's up, Naru? Do you believe I did the right thing? I can't say. She was raised to fight, spy, and kill like a Danzo operative. All we could do was wait and see. After that, Naruto fell silent. He'll just have to wait until she wakes up to see what he can do. The next morning. Naruto awoke to a shocking scene. He noticed his prisoner, crying in his bead as he hugged her knee. He stood up and noticed her staring at him. WH going what's on, what did you do to me? She inquired quietly. Naruto exhaled a sigh. He paused for a moment before responding. Well, to put it simply, I unblocked your previously blocked memory. You recall the base where you were trained, with all those little girls brainwashing you and implanting false memories. They were unblocked by me. Ivan, you can now recall your true childhood and your adopted father. I'm not sure why he put you in that program. They brainwashed everyone and trained you for their own purposes. Furthermore, it appears that the people for whom you work are attempting to take over the world. It is now up to you to decide what you want to do. You can either go back and get killed because you failed the mission, or you can start over with your skills. If you want, I can assist you. 
She sat there, going over what she had heard. She rummaged through her memories. She remembers everything, her adopted father, how he used to play with her, then how he carried her into a base, where they trained her with others, how they used to fight together, eat and sleep together, the mock missions, how they injected her with experiments that made them stronger and faster. She remembered being placed in a machine that attempted to implant memories in her mind. She recalled everything. She recalled her meeting with the Russian military board. She needed to figure out why their shipment was delayed, as well as infiltrate Tony Stark's building and steal information on his iron suits. She turned to Naruto, curious about something. Why? Why are you assisting me? Why did you do this, and what do you stand to gain from it? Naruto smiled as he looked at her. He understood why she was asking. My entire life, and you could say the way I grew up, had some parallels. My life had been filled with lies and betrayal. I had to fight just to live another day. So you could. I understand what you're going through, and I have nothing to gain by assisting you. I simply wanted to. She could tell he wasn't lying because she could see the pain in his eyes just remembering it. Can you give me some time to think? Naruto gave a nod. He stood up and prepared to leave. Take as much time as you need, and your belongings are on the desk in the corner over there. He exited the room and went to the kitchen to prepare breakfast. 30 minutes later. Naruto had just finished his breakfast. You know, Natasha, you could have stayed for breakfast before you left. He turned around and saw her, all geared up. I made this for both of us. Please take a seat. I don't have much company over, so it's nice to have a change. How did you discover I was there? I knew I didn't make a sound because I was one of the best trained in stealth. And yesterday, you flew over 400 feet in seconds, with that knife piercing the concrete like it was wood. She inquired. She moved and sat down. Naruto laughed. He sat down and placed the meal in front of her. Let's just say I felt your presence, and I am far stronger than I appear. Natasha smirked. That's not saying much. He exhaled a sigh. All right, after this, let's go spar. I really want to see what you're capable of, and from there, we'll see what we can move on to. She nodded and began to eat. Fifteen minutes later. Naruto and Natasha are now facing each other in their respective fighting stances. Natasha was observing Naruto's stance and noticed that it was quite different from the one he had been experiencing previously. His legs were bent, his right foot was forward, his body was sideways, and his right side was facing her. His palms were open, both facing forward, the right side more so. He wore a serene expression on his face. You may attack whenever you are ready. He spoke quietly, but she heard him. She took a more aggressive stance, almost like a boxer. Legs slightly bent, hands fisted, right fist forward. She dashed forward, charging at him head on. She jumped with a right kick, aiming for his head, as she approached him. Naruto simply grabbed it, spun with her, and threw her behind him. She did a back flip and charged at him. She ducked low and aimed for his chest with two punches. Naruto simply drew the first one to his side, caught the second, and aimed a palm at her open gut. When it hit her, she exclaimed, and her knee nearly buckled under her. He hit her, then let go of her hand, and she backed up. She took a deep breath and focused her attention on Naruto. Damn it! What the hell did he get away with? I can't seem to get past his guard, and that palm strike felt like being hit with a steel pipe. What are you contemplating? A voice spoke directly into her ear from behind her. 
The person in front of her vanished, and she looked behind her to see Naruto standing normally. Her expression changed to one of surprise. What? How? When? She attempted to form a sentence. You can't beat me, Natasha, no matter what you try. I'm way above your level. I'm not trying to diminish your strength or anything. You're strong, but I'm way above your lead. He stated. Natasha simply collapsed to the ground. She realized that fighting was pointless. Naruto simply approached her. He picked her up and held her as he was about to assist her. Natasha, who had no idea what was going on, tried to break free from his grip when she heard a thump on his body and he gasped. When she noticed an arrow sticking out of his back near his shoulder blade, she raised her head. She realized he had saved her life by shielding her from a fatal bullet. She watched as he reached for it, breaking it as close to the skin as possible, and holding it in his hand. He looked in the direction of the shot and saw a man dressed in a black sleeveless jacket, black pants, and boots, carrying an arrow pack on his back. He was in the same building where he had apprehended Natasha. He couldn't tell his height because he was stooping. He had dark brown hair and was of average build. It appears that I let my guard down. While throwing the broken arrow on the ground, Naruto muttered. He looked at Natasha, who had a puzzled, concerned expression on her face. He simply smiled at her. Hold on a second, I'll be right back. He returned his attention to the figure on the roof. He looked at him for a split second before disappearing. Natasha's pupils dilate slightly. She's still amazed at his speed. She was watching in the distance when she noticed him appear behind the man. Naruto emerged from behind the figure. What is your name? His tone was cold and merciless. The man jumped and turned around, thinking to himself, fast. He was taken aback. He was only looking at the person standing next to his target. He swung his bow at the man, attempting to hit him on the head. Naruto simply grabbed it and held it. I inquired as to your identity. I wouldn't ask so nicely again. Naruto stated once more. When he realized he couldn't use his bow, he went for a high right kick to the chin, followed by a spin kick with his next foot. Naruto let go of the bow, blocking the first and grabbing the second. When he realized the man was not responding, he charged forward and delivered a couple punches to the man's chest. The man simply gasped and coughed before collapsing to the ground. Those punches felt like two sledge hammers to the chest. Naruto then threw him out. He sighed. It appears that he will have to return to Tony sooner than expected. Well, I think my head is clear enough now, and I've accepted my predicament. He threw the man over his shoulders and returned to Natasha, who was staring at him in wonder. You were holding back a lot on me, weren't you? She inquired. Yes, I don't want to kill you just because you've regained your life, and, well, I'm complicated. He responded with a small laugh at the end. So, Mr. Hawkeye, are you awake yet? Or does Clint Baron sound more appealing? I'm curious, which one do you prefer? Hawkeye, Clint Baron, the identified person, looked up to a blonde-haired man with whisker-like marks on his face and blue eyes. Who the hell am I? And where am I? Hawkeye said something, his voice raspy. Naruto looked at him, unsure what to do with him. He already has all of his information on him, as well as some on this organization known as SHEILD. He noticed that people are looking into his savior, Mr. Stark, and he noticed that he appears to be in a bind. He had already packed and planned to move, but given his current situation, he does not have a plan in place. Given our recent disagreement, and the reason for your attack, I just wanted to let you know that Natasha is no longer your adversary. She was brainwashed when she was young, trained to be a spy behind enemy lines, and lied to. 
she has defected and is willing to trade all of her information to your small organization in exchange for her freedom. So, what will be your response? Clint closed his eyes for a moment, taking in his predicament. He opened his eyes and looked Naruto in the eyes. I'm not sure, and it appears that I don't have much of a choice in this situation. Okay, but I can't leave empty-handed. I require proof. Naruto smirked, knowing what was going to happen. He loosened the man's grip and handed him a USB drive. That contains information she has been gathering since she arrived. It has drop-off points for people who are from this country and work for them. Also included are the times and quantities of weapons transported. It is only some. When her freedom is confirmed, she will give everything she has. Return here when she is free. I will be waiting. Naruto turned around, picked up his bags, and vanished. Clint placed the USB in his pocket after inspecting it. He exhaled a sigh. Fury isn't going to like hearing about this new guy. He already has problems keeping Stark in line and trying to get Banner. But where on earth did this guy come from, and what kind of person is he? Is he like that guy from the ice we melted? He wondered. He looked around for his equipment before leaving. Naruto appeared in the diner where he works. He had just dropped his bags and was about to call out when he heard. A voice from behind him asked, Where are you going packed like that, are you leaving? When he turned around, he noticed Natasha staring at him. He could tell she was worried, but he couldn't figure out why. Oh, Natasha, I'm going out. I'll track you down once I've received confirmation of your freedom. I just need to pay off any debts I owe here and resolve any issues. I did promise Stark to return, and I'm in a jam right now, and I don't break promises. So you can do whatever you want as long as you don't make any targets on your back. Natasha lowered her gaze slightly. She did not want him to leave. She had never felt so close to anyone before. He had set her free, protected her, and even fought for her. He has done more for her in less time than anyone else. When she felt a pair of arms around her, she was jolted out of her reverie. When she looked up, she saw Naruto smiling down at her. She then returned his hug. Please don't leave me alone. She said it quietly. Naruto only held her after hearing her. He exhaled a sigh. He appears to be meeting Stark with company. Okay, gather your belongings. We'll be leaving in a few minutes after I finish my business. Natasha nodded and smiled, a genuine smile from what he could tell. Looks like you've got a lady on your side, Naru-kun. In his head, a voice spoke to him. Well, if I tell her the whole story, I doubt she'll stay, and it'll have to be soon. He responded. He turned around and went to the kitchen to find his boss. Today was his last day here, for however long. Presentation by Justin Hammer Industries. Naruto and Natasha appeared on a roof, where they saw Stark in his suit talking to Rodi on stage while everyone cheered. He takes a look around and notices Pepper. He notices all the drones and gets a bad feeling, and he notices Stark still talking to Rodi. He increases his chakra flow in his ears in an attempt to hear what they are saying. Get everyone out of here, Rodi, you just have to believe me. Ivan is still alive and working with the hammer. And he is the creator of these drones. Ivan is still alive. What's going on? My suit is out of control. Something is wrong, Stark. You must leave. They are all being targeted. What are they after? You. Stark then takes off, with some of the drones trailing behind him, with Rhodey in the lead, attempting to shoot him down. 
He then notices Hammer running in the back, as well as people running for cover. He looks at Natasha. Are you good with computers, Natasha? Yeah, why? She responded, watching the scene. Take pots and go find that man, Justin Hammer. From what I've heard, he's working with a guy named Ivan, and they're in charge of those drones. I'll handle crowd control. We need to prevent the remaining drones from activating or else all hell will break loose. Don't worry, I'll keep an eye on you as well. She gave a nod. Naruto removed his face mask and jumped off the roof, smirking while placing his hand on a cross shape symbol and whispering. Taju Cage Bunshin no Jutsu is a Japanese martial arts film. Natasha just stood there, eyes wide, jaw open, as if from one man came a thousand. What in the name of God? Come on, get moving and stop staring. She turned around to see Naruto standing behind her. Wait, I just saw you jump down. I'm a clone. Boss told me to carry you to Ms. Potts and keep an eye on you guys, so come on. The clone said, picking her up and jumping down to Pepper. Pepper was having a terrible day. She was recently promoted to CEO of Stark Industries, and her job has been causing her more stress than she can handle. She has also been looking for an assistant, which is taking much longer than she expected. Now she's sitting there, watching Justin Hammer try to show off his work and ruin her boss name. Then her boss appears, landing in his own suit and waving to the audience. Her instinct tells her something is wrong, and as usual, she is correct, because the drones are now all over the place, destroying everything in their path, including her boss, Tony Stark. It appears that your boss requires assistance there, Ms. Potts. A voice called out from behind her. She turns around and looks around. One had blonde hair, which she recognized. Naruto? She asked quietly. He simply nodded and pulled his mask down, revealing his entire face. Can you tell me what you're doing here and where you've been? She almost screamed. We'll talk later when this mess is cleared up. We should be trying to save your boss. He said this while pointing to Tony, who is still running to get the drones away from the crowd. He also sees some clones escorting people out and attempting to hold back some of the drones that have been activated and are destroying everything. Come on, we've got to find that hammer guy, he's got some insight into what's going on. Potts nodded, and the three returned to the stage to see what they could come up with. Meanwhile, the real Naruto was fighting three drones that were aiming their weapons at a group of civilians. Hmm. How about I try out the Rinnegan on these guys, Katsumi? I'd say it's a waste of chakra and excessive killing, but we don't get much fun these days, so I say go for it. True that, Naruto chuckled. He activated it in his mind's eye and raised his right hand to face the nearest drone. Bansho Tenen, he said quietly as the drone approached him. It fought back, attempting to remain on the ground, but failing. Naruto raised his left hand as it approached, a blue sphere forming in it. Rasengan, he slammed it into the drone's chest, blowing it to bits. When the other drone systems realized this person was a threat, they began to fire at him. Naruto simply raised his hand once more. Shinra Tensai simply slowed the bullets and rockets and returned them full force. They were blown to smithereens. The people in the crowd behind him were all staring at him. Don't worry, I've got some more drones to destroy. He said this to them with a Kakashi eyes smile, as he has both eyes. He then vanished in a puff of smoke. He appeared next to the kid in an Iron Man helmet, staring down a drone and holding the Iron Man hand blaster. He exhaled a sigh. Kids in this dimension believe everything they see on TV. Naruto simply raised his arm and blasted the drone with a concentrated Shinra Tensai. It was picked up and flew back for a few hundred feet before being blasted through the chest by Iron Man. 
Naruto noticed Tony Lan directly in front of him. Well, Mr. Stark, it's been a while. Naruto stated. Tony advanced and raised his face shield. Naruto? Welcome back, but what brings you here? Well, I saw you had some problems, so I thought I'd lend a hand. Naruto smirked in response. He then became solemn. Natasha, a friend of mine, is guarding pots and looking into that guy, Justin Hammer. In addition, I'm almost finished getting all of the civilians to safety. The north and west sides are both clear. The east is nearly finished, and some people are seeking refuge inside. I believe I took out about six of those drones, and my clones took out another four. There are about eight in the air chasing you, and I believe they are on their way here now, and another dozen will be launched if Potts and Natasha don't figure out how Ivan is controlling these drones, wait, he is in Justin Hammer Industries, and Natasha is on her way there with your driver. Potts is staying behind, so we must keep these drones in place and destroy them before they destroy us. Tony simply shook his head, astounded by what this man was capable of. He lowered his face shield, bracing himself for the oncoming drones. Naruto, you are truly remarkable. One thing is that Rodi is being controlled in a suit similar to mine. I'm trying to take him out without injuring him too much. Well, I'm not sure what you can do, so do what you can, and I'll try to take them somewhere where less damage can be done. Naruto nodded, noticing that they were moving quickly and that there was a lot more, which appeared to be all. Well, based on my calculations, it appears that this Ivan guy wants your head. I'll be right behind you. Tony nodded and leapt into the air. Naruto stood there watching as they got closer. He created a clone and began a Rasengan. Naruto wants to make a big bang, he reasoned. Katsumi simply laughed at his childish antics. A loud screeching sound could be heard throughout the area. Razen Shuriken Futen. He grinned. I haven't used this in a long time. Tony, who was in the air, looked on in awe. What is that, Jarvis? Sir, I'm not sure, and I can't find anything in my database. My scans and readings show that the energy output is very high, and his chest piece reading shows a similar energy signature. It's not like yours or the original one you gave him, sir. I believe he changed it. Naruto waited until Rodi's suit passed before throwing it at the group behind him. It grew and exploded, engulfing more than half of the group. Well, I did reduce the group size for him. I wonder if he could get the rest out. Rodi, who saw the kid as he passed and saw the attack and damage it had caused, was scared. Hey Tony, what the hell was that, and who the hell is that kid? He inquired. That's the Naruto kid I mentioned. And you were worried about him? Are you insane? You saw the damage that caused. We're lucky we weren't his enemies, or he'd have wiped us out. Tony laughed. So, I'll take us over to the greenhouse. It will cause less property damage than we require. That's all well and good, but it doesn't matter because how the hell am I going to stop this suit? That's something I'm still working on. Naruto dashed towards the greenhouse where he heard the fight. He also witnessed and heard an explosion. Man, they love using loud weapons, geez. He then noticed that it became quiet, as if the fight had ended. Well, it appears to be. When he noticed a flying suit in the air, his thoughts were interrupted. It was making its way to the battleground. Looks like I squandered that thought, and we got some big company, this one's different, he grumbled. He dashed to the scene, eager to put an end to this pointless brawl. When he arrived, he saw Tony and Rhodey facing Ivan, who was dressed in a suit with electric wiring whips. 
Well, it appears that Rhodey has regained control of his suit, Natasha. He then saw something fired from Rhodey's suit that simply bounced off Ivan's armor. Everyone was expecting something to happen. Hammer tech? Tony inquired. Yeah, Rhodey agreed. Naruto simply dropped his sweat and faced palm. Katsumi could be heard laughing her a dollar dollar off. He then noticed Tony firing some smaller ones, and Ivan simply walked through it. Ivan then launched an offensive, whipping both of them. He slashed through Rhodey's machine gun on his shoulder, snatched Tony by the waist in the air, and slammed him back down. Rhodey began shooting at him with guns in his hands, distracting him from Tony. Tony tried to spear him when his back was open, but Ivan dodged. He then wrapped the whip around Rhodey's neck, pulled him, and slammed him back on the ground with a right hook. Tony charged again from behind, sending him reeling with a mighty right hook from the air, and then another right when he got back up with a left, but Tony then got a head bet and a whip across the chest, and Ivan then caught him around the neck. Rhodey began shooting at him again from where he was lying on the ground, but Ivan approached him and slammed his right foot into his chest. Tony yanked him away, but Ivan wrapped the whip around Rhodey's neck as well. They were struggling to break free, and it was piercing their armor and interfering with their system. Naruto thought quickly, got as close as he could, and formed two Rasengan, one in each hand. He then ran as fast as he could and slammed both of them right into his chest. It pierced the Rasengan's chest piece and armor, and when it couldn't hold its shape any longer, it blew up, sending him flying into the rocks. Naruto approached him after noticing that he was still alive. Tony and Rodi approached him. I suppose it's over, Tony. Naruto stated. But what was the nature of the attack? And what about the one from before, who was screeching so loudly? Tony asked. Yeah, a little more power and you'd have a nice bomb in your hand. Rodi made a remark. Naruto laughed. That was not even the full extent of its power, and it is just one of the many techniques I learned from where I came from. Any. Ivan, who appears to still be able to speak, interrupted him. You lose, Tony Stark, you lose he said quietly, and the drone's chest pieces began to beep and turn red all around him. Tony, my scanners indicate that those chest pieces are rigged to explode. We must proceed, man. Rhodey issued a warning. Pepper. Naruto, where have you gone? Tony inquired. We have to go to the expo grounds right now because she is still there. And I know exactly how to get there quickly. Naruto yelled. His body erupted in a golden aura, and he vanished faster than either of them could have imagined. Let's get Tony moving. Rhodey said as the two took off. Pepper was standing outside the convention center when she heard a beeping sound. She noticed the chest piece of one of the destroyed drones blinking red. It became increasingly faster. Then a golden flash appeared in front of her, grabbed her, and flew away. She began to panic when the movement ceased. Hey, 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 Naruto, relax, it's just me. You are secure. Naruto said this while attempting to calm her down. Then Tony appeared. Pepper, are you okay? He asked, taking off his sparking helmet. Tony, I can't take it any longer. I can't deal with this stress. I'm resigning, not quitting. She screamed. What? He asked, a little taken aback. Meanwhile, Naruto and Rodi were watching the action unfold. Do you think they're aware we're here? Naruto inquired of Rodi. Nope. I believe we should inform them. Nope. Would you like to bet they'll kiss and make up? Rhodey turned to look at him, skeptical. I have a feeling it's not a good idea to bet with you. Naruto simply laughed and patted him on the back. 
That's a good feeling because I've never lost a bet before. And there's kissing and making up going on. Rody just stood there, stunned. He swallowed and cleared his throat. You two look like seals squabbling over a grape. He made a remark. They tried to come up with an excuse, but Naruto simply laughed. Guys, don't do it. Rody and I both noticed the hold. Men, get lost. I was the first one here, Rody explained. Naruto swallowed and cleared his throat. I was here first, so fly away. Rody just muttered something under his breath. What exactly did you say? Naruto inquired, his Rasengan in hand. Rody defended himself by waving his hands, nothing. Hey Tony, my car was caught in the explosion, so I'll need to hang on to the suit for a little while longer, okay? Uh, no. There was no question. And Rody took off flying. You've got a nice friend there, Tony. Naruto stated. He's cool, yeah. So, I need a place to stay for two people as well as a job. So, can you help me out? Naruto inquired. Tony paused for a moment. Well. After two weeks. It is an honor for me to be here to present these prestigious awards to Tony Stark, LT. James Rhodes, and the anonymous person, who all assisted and fought valiantly to protect the people. Senator Stern made the announcement. I still don't understand why he doesn't want to be known. Tony spoke quietly to Rhodey. Perhaps he doesn't want to be world famous, like you and have a target painted on his back. Oh, hey, being famous like me isn't so bad, and well, point taken. Naruto just chuckled in his seat, next to Natasha in the audience. Following the presentation, Tony, Pepper, Naruto, and Natasha were walking to their car when they were stopped by a voice. Mr. Stark. They all came to a halt, and Tony turned around. What can I do for you, Mr. Fury? Fury approached them and came to a halt in front of Natasha. Naruto tensed slightly. He presents her with a package. I just wanted to bring Miss Romanov a package. Go ahead and do it. She did so, puzzledly watching the man. Her eyes widened as she noticed a couple of documents inside. She handed it to Naruto, who read what was inside. Mr. Fury, you kept your end of the bargain, so we'll keep ours. Here's the rest of it, everything. Naruto said this while handing him a USB. He accepted it and put it in his pocket. Thank you very much. I only have one question for you, Ms. Romanov. Do you want to be an agent of SHEILD? We could benefit from someone with your skill set. Her eyes widened slightly. She cast a glance at Naruto. It's entirely up to you. Can you give me some time to think? Fury gave a nod. All right, I'll send more information to Agent Coulson later this week. He turned to leave, but stopped in the middle. I've got my eye on you, Mr. Uzumaki. Naruto just chuckled. Yep, I think I'm going to like it here, he said aloud. So that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel for more awesome stories like this. Thank you. See you all in my next video.